Hey, this is Seth with In Demand Career. I show people how to get life-changing jobs in digital marketing with no previous experience and no college degree. And that's very appropriate because this video is called How to Drop Out of College the Right Way. And I'm actually going to be interviewing one of my very successful students who is making $80,000 a year in paid search uh, or paid advertising. He actually hires people as part of his job and he dropped out of college. So he's going to explain to you how he dropped out and you know his tips on how to do it, as I said, the right way. I know this is something a lot of you guys struggle with because your parents, your teachers, the whole society is telling you that dropping out of college is some kind of a failure, which it is not. It actually takes guts and individual thinking, uh, critical thinking to do this. So we're going to actually walk you through uh, some tips and a process that will make this easier for you guys. Um, I want you to feel empowered. I want you to know you do have a choice and uh, it can actually be easier when you know how to do it the right way. So anyway, I'm very excited to talk with Diego about this. Thanks for being here, Diego. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hopefully we can have some value and make this stressful decision for a lot of your students uh, a lot more easier. Yes, for sure. Now <clears throat> we're going to get into like why you might want to drop out of college soon, which is like, there's a multitude of reasons. Um, but let's just say you're watching this and you are already thinking about dropping out of college. Maybe you realize college isn't for you. You realize that the classes are slow and outdated and irrelevant, and you just don't like what you're doing. Um, Diego, why don't you tell people a little bit about what college was like for you? And then we'll transition into like what people can do to make the dropout decision easier. Yeah, for sure. So for college for me, um, give a background. I was in mechanical engineering for about three years. I'm at Cal State Long Beach. It's kind of following down the path that my brother went down. Um, he's a mechanical engineer, works at an aerospace company. So I was kind of just following his footsteps. But about you know three years in, I started taking more of the higher level courses, um, like linear equations, differential equations and such, cal calculus three and all these types of things. And the professor's it's like they know the subjects, but they just suck at teaching them. Um, I had a professor who would write really bad handwriting with his right hand, but I was still able to read it a little bit. And then out of nowhere in the middle of the class, he would just switch left handed and it would just be completely like I just couldn't read it anymore. I would literally close my book and be like, yeah, I'm done for the day. I don't know, know what this guy's writing. And then on top of that, the way he communicated was very monotone. There's no energy behind his voice. It was just horrible. So I had a bunch of those professors. It was just really bad. I remember one time, I'm sure a lot of people in college know Rate My Professor, the uh, the, the website. A lot of the times in engineering, people, the departments kind of knew that everyone was trying to get like the good rated professors and didn't want to go for like the two or low rated but they would sneak up on you. So you would schedule your classes for a rated four or five professor. And then the day you show up, you realize, oh, they swapped out the rated five professor with a rated two professor. And then you're like forced in that class now. So I got to yeah. jump in for a second, guys, because this is, again, it, you guys, I mean, again, if you're thinking about dropping out of college, you are so on the right track, guys. This is what I cannot stand about college, why I'm so passionate about it, because I I had the same issue in like my college years ago. It's like you're paying these idiots $40,000, $50,000 a year, and you don't even have control over who teaches you. And they hire these professors, they give them tenure. And what tenure means is that some guy gets a um, basically a job for life, meaning this professor 20 years ago got tenure. And that means they basically can come into work every day and nobody is assessing their performance. It's not like a regular job where every quarter or so your boss would be like, if you stopped doing your, your job, your boss would be like, hey, uh, Joe, you stopped doing your job. We, we're going to have to fire you. But in college, these tenured professors, they can do anything and they will still have their job. So that's why you get a lot of these terrible professors. And then you get every student fighting for the one good professor. And that's crazy, dude, because you've already paid these idiots $40,000. I can't imagine another industry where that is possible it's like it's like you go to the bmw dealership and you give them 80 grand and to buy like you know um a series five car a series seven whatever and they're like okay well we know you wanted you know you wanted the uh, the high level car but we're going to give you the series three or something you know it's like it's just insane so anyway I, I think a lot of people can sympathize with what you're saying i just wanted to acknowledge that i totally agree with that uh but most of it again we just accept that that's how it's supposed to be but i'm you know it, that is not how it should be. 
Yeah, no, 100%. It's just it's just an outdated system. It's a model that worked for, you know, it's a model that worked possibly when it was a lot cheaper. But the fact that it's so expensive now, people are getting into so many, so much debt. And it also used to work when having a degree actually made you different in the market. When everyone has a degree, it kind of means that it's somewhat useless. Um, I have a lot of people at my job who have college degrees who don't even work in the industry that they got a degree in, which is another topic that we can discuss. So there's definitely a lot of flaws. I personally am of the belief that the generation, our generation or my generation that's going to have kids next, we're not going to be pushing our kids to have degrees as much as our parents are right now. Absolutely. Um, not. And yeah. just again, to bring this home and guys, you know, we're going to get into the tips in a moment. I just want to, again, I want to give you a lot of like uh, just assurance and, you know, support in the fact that if you are questioning dropping out of college, you are making an intelligent decision. That's the other thing that's so crazy is people will be telling you, Oh, it's a bad idea to drop out, but you're looking at practically, you're like, all these things don't add up. Um, and the real thing is that college, again, colleges were universities were created in the year, like uh, like 1100 AD in Europe. They are literally a thousand year old institution a way of teaching things. Um, they still did work also back in the sixties when your grandparents were going to college, my parents, your grandparents, um, because that was the only way to learn anything. That's the other thing. There was no internet. There was no websites. There were no online courses. Literally, if you want to learn engineering or any of these topics or even English or something, literally uh, there were the, you'd have to go to the library or you'd go to a college. That was it. There were no resources like we have today. That's another reason why everything is slow, so slow and outdated. So now that we've established that you were, you know, clearly in the right for questioning this, what happened? Did you, did you instantly drop out or did you feel like that wouldn't have been cool with your family? Yeah. So background on my end, I come from an immigrant family. Both my parents are from Mexico. So dropping out of college, coming from their mindset, the immigrant mentality is definitely like a big no, no. Cause you know, they came to this country to give you a better education, provide for you so you can have a better future. That was their sense. So um, that was like a big stressful thing coming in me because I knew about two and a half years in, I was like, oh, I don't know if this is for me, but I was keep going through because I just didn't want to drop out and face my parents on that end. But what I started to do is basically just research industries um, and which would be a, a, a recommendation that I would have for anyone is if you're thinking about changing a field, dropping out and doing something else, do some research of the industry first, see what actual opportunities there are, how, what is the trend of that industry? Is it going up to let you know on paid media, the fact that COVID hit, it forced a bunch of businesses to go online. So marketing became a much needed uh, skill set to have on your team. So the trend of digital, digital marketing just skyrocketed as of 2020 and continue to just go up. So I would just continue to just do research uh, and consume content on the line just so you can kind of get a surface level of, of what, what it is, see if you actually are interested in it um, and do those types of things. Uh, watching some of the interviews that Seth does and seeing what other people have experienced with their, with their uh, field in the realm of digital marketing, I think is is a, a much needed thing that will kind of just level you basically. Um, but me, do you want me, me to go for a second? Hold your thought yeah. because I just want to piggyback on that because you're right. Um, and it is true, but you know, one of the, one of the biggest problems with college and school in general is that it's so di it's disconnected from real life. You're in this bubble. And what happens is most of you guys get caught up in your college assignments with these esoteric classes and you absolutely know awareness of the job market, which is what Diego is speaking to is the job market. What jobs and skills are in demand and what are not? And when you're so consumed with your coursework, um, even in engineering, but especially in those unrelated fields, you know, English history, those liberal arts degrees, you're doing a paper, you're writing something, and you have no idea what's going to be going on when you graduate. Um, the whole point of college is supposedly it makes you more money, but they never talk to you about jobs and you have no awareness of what is in demand or not. And again, even these, these schools that teach mark, have marketing degree programs, they don't even teach digital or they do it as an elective, which is mind blowing. Um, even if you're in engineering, um, you need to know which fields within engineering are in demand, you know, mechanical versus electrical versus, you know, biomedical, these types of different things. There's all different demand levels. You can't really get that from within school. You have to get on LinkedIn. You have to go online and do your, do your own research, which is something I think you should be doing even if you're not going to drop out. But if you are going to drop out, this is definitely where you want to be putting your attention because honestly, you're just doing what you'll have to do anyway after you graduate, right? That's the irony. You're just accelerating your process because when you graduate, you have the party, you throw the stupid hat and the next day you're like, oh, whoa, I got to get a job. I don't know yeah. anything about that. 
So reality hits no matter what, like reality right. hits if you're going to be needed in the market or not. Right. So I'm just going to walk people quickly through what you did. You, 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 you knew that engineering wasn't for you. And then you tried to pivot to another major, correct? Yeah. So I tried to pivot into computer science. So what I did is I did my research on computer science. I was like, oh, programming is the future. Everyone, everything is software these days. I'm just going to do that. Um, so I started taking courses online on like JavaScript, HTML, CSS. And then I accidentally took one on WordPress, which I thought was a coding language, but apparently it's just a platform for building websites. But I actually kind of liked it. And I, I started, I built a couple websites for a restaurant, a Chinese restaurant and a gym um, during my time when I was in engineering. But, and now I'll go back to that later on, but um, I just learned coding and then I just pivoted to computer science. Um, and there was something that happened during summer. Um, there was like a, a course or a class I had to take over summer for computer science in order to take my classes for the next semester, the fall semester. But things happened. I had to drop out of that summer class. And because of that, I was no longer able to actually take the course the following semester. So I was in a way forced to drop out. Um, although it was in my mind for a while, I just was scared to pull the trigger, but with this situation, I was forced to drop out. Um, that's, that's so, very yeah. interesting. And I'm going to get back to that because I want to, I'm curious about, you know, we're going to talk about your family and stuff. And a lot of you guys, I know you're in that situation. Like you want to drop out. You wish it could be that easy to be like, Hey, mom and dad, I want to drop out. Okay. You know, but you're being told like, it's like, you're jumping off a cliff. Like, Oh my God, you're ruining your life. You know, I even, you guys wouldn't believe this back in the nineties when I was in college years ago, my buddy dropped out. And I remember I, I pleaded with him to stay. You wouldn't have recognized me. I was like, you're throwing your future away. And you, if you guys could have seen me, you would have been like, who, this is not Seth, you know, it was before I woke up, but, um, Essentially, so you, but you were still you were still trying to be the good kid. You know, you're trying to stay in a different major. But you you're telling me you're you're taking these classes on your own, learning JavaScript. So how you know how did the stuff you learned on your own compare compare to the classes uh, that you did take in computer science in college? Well, for one, it was just way more efficient the way I learned online. Um, I learned way more online, and I would say in a month with taking courses online for Python than I would in the entire semester of the Python course that I took at actual college. Um, it's just insane how inefficient it was. Absolutely. And so uh, why don't you then, so again, you were kind of forced into dropping out, although you secretly wanted to do it. Why don't you, you told me you had suggestions of like what you would have done instead if you knew them, what you know now, how to really ease this transition for people who are considering dropping out. Yeah. So first I would have, instead of going the computer science route after doing my research and going into the computer science route, I would have just chose marketing instead, but I would still have done that same thing of doing research, diving into the topic, understanding what it is, seeing if it's actually something I want to do and th those types of things. Once you figure out like, yep, this is something I'm interested in. Then what I would do is strategically from your sense if you're in college is figure out how many units, the bare minimum amount of units that you need to take. Um, I think when I was in college, it was like 13 units or something like that, which came out to around, I think each class was like three units, somewhere like two or such. So you'll probably be taking like four or five classes in a semester, but just try to take as bare minimum units and try to take GEs, like the easiest classes that you can so that you don't have to spend so much time studying. Because if you're in engineering and you're taking thermodynamics, if you're taking statics, if you're taking Calc 3, that's going to take a long time to study and try to get good grades at. Um so I would just pick a GE where it would be easy enough to get like a C or a B at least. And then the rest of the time, I would say to dive, if you know that this is an industry you want to get to, dive into courses like Seth, where you can actually learn skills and figure out how to get into a job and just kind of understand that first semester is just about building the knowledge. And then when summer hits or winter break, whatever break there is, that's your chance to go out and actually get opportunities and uh, start working for free. That's what I did. I worked for free for a gym. I ran Facebook ads for them and stuff like that. So just do those types of things. Take that time where it's free to just go out, get internships and quote unquote, I guess they would be called internships, but just free jobs, um, build up your resume from there. And then from there, you could actually implement some of the stuff um, that Seth teaches in his courses on actually how to get a job in digital marketing. So that break would be time to get experience. And then when the next semester comes in, do the same thing, take as least amount of units as you can, try to get as easy as classes as you can, and just start looking for jobs. And then once you get a job, now you're free to actually drop out with actually some income to show to your parents. That is brilliant, man. And it's very much in alignment with what I tell my, um, my uh, readers in skip college for success is that if you're in high school, um, 
but obviously before college, I basically am like, get a, get a C or get a D even, because really no, nobody cares about your grades except the college that you're trying to get into. So the idea of doing the bare minimum requirement in college is very, very uh, smart because if your parents are still putting pressure on you to stay in the school, you're like, okay, they're paying, you know, they're paying for such and such. I need to stay in my dorm. I don't want to disappoint them or whatever you're thinking. That's, that's great advice. Do as little work as possible on college so you can put your focus on something that's actually practical, whether it's my course or coding or, I mean, really, I think if you're watching this, you really should be focusing on digital skills of some kind. That's the future. Um, I don't know if you want to, you know, study. You can do a trade too, but that's a whole other school, you know. Mm -hmm. But the point is, you're thinking practically. And ironically, this happened with so many of my students is they're in college dealing with their BS classes. And then they're taking my course, getting actual experience. And that's what ultimately ends up getting them income. Um, and I like the idea that you said to do this during the semester where you still have to to deal with your classes and then in the summer you're free so that's when you can really go crazy and you know you can start getting results getting clients and i've just interviewed a uh, someone who was a business major who was in a similar situation he actually he did not want to drop out because his parents were going to cut him off financially which i think is something terrible that a lot of parents you know threaten um it makes so much more sense to say okay so you want to drop out of college we'll help you if you get a job or you know find a marketable skill but so he was doing his business degree while he was getting clients. So by the time he did graduate, he's he's killing it. Um, so, you know, that's a way that you can, you know, sort of ease the transition, guys. And again, once you already have a client or you have jobs lined up, it's you'll feel so much more confident dropping out. And then it's like, what are your parents going to say if you already got a job offer? You know, because that's what they always go to. It's like, well, if you drop out of college, you're going to be poor living in a van down by the river, which is bullshit. But they will have that over your head. Then you can actually be like, hey, I, well, I, I, I'm actually not going to be homeless living in a van down by the river. I'm actually going to be making more money than my classmates who don't have marketable skills. And here's the proof. And then you'll feel a lot more confident. So uh, I hope that's I hope that is that's kind of I thought that was really good advice. And uh, what, what else do you have to say about that, Diego? Um. I'm not sure if you want to talk about the, uh, I mean, my, my point of view is kind of interesting because I did come from an immigrant mentality, like the, my, the household. And I had a lot of resentment. Like if you're trying to drop out and you have resentment for your parents, um, I think a big thing you have to understand and what's something that really helped me when I, and understand is like at the beginning, when I dropped out, my mom cried a lot. She told me like, kind of like what you were telling your friend, like you're throwing your life away, <laughs> uh, all these types of things. Uh, she, and, Mexican household, a lot of people know uh, chisme basically means like, you know, drama and chit chat and stuff. So she would tell a lot of my uncles, a lot of my aunts and stuff like that. So at family parties, I'd be like, why'd you drop out? Like all these types of things. But I just kept going at it. But throughout that time, I had a lot of resentment um, towards my mom specifically. And my dad was more of like, all right, well, it's your decision, your life, do what you got to do. But my mom was very adamant on me going back to school. Either way, um, once I got my job and I started to actually like show money, that's when my mom came around. Um, cause like once you bring in the checks, you're like, oh yeah, I'm living on my own, able to support myself and all these types of things. They're going to like, it's like, all right, cool. Um, and especially too, one thing you didn't mention is you don't get debt going this route. Um, that's a big thing too. Um, so one thing you should understand, um, is my mom, for example, she's in her sixties. She doesn't even know how to use an iPhone that much. So how am I going to explain to her? Yeah, I'm going to drop out and I'm going to create my career online. It just not in, it's just out of her scope of knowledge. So she doesn't know what she doesn't know. And that kind of made me realize like at the end of the day, your parents want what's best for you, but the society has marketed to them heavily that college is the way to succeed in life. So they're going to believe what's been marketed to them for years and years and years. So you can't be too hard on your parents for them to not understand what the opportunities are in the world when it comes to the internet. That's something that I would tell would be another thing to just tackle it from a mindset of like, yeah, you're getting a lot of shit from your parents, but at the end of the day, they want what's best for you. You just have to prove to them that this route is what's best for you. Absolutely, man. I think that's really a really key point. I actually had a, I had a younger student who was in high school who, um, who you know, didn't want to go to college and getting pressure to go. And he was really pissed at his parents. And um, I tried to tell him the same thing. I totally sympathize. But, you know, you waste a lot of energy if you are going to try to change your parents' minds 
or get resentful towards them. And I think it is good to be sympathetic and compassionate and understand where they're coming from, but don't, at the same time, that doesn't mean you give in. Um, I actually think it gives you more power when you're compassionate towards someone, you can kind of see their limitations and then you feel more relaxed. You don't feel like you have to, because you realize also, this is why also like, for instance, I don't ever try to convince anyone to not go to college or to drop out. It's like trying to argue religion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a belief. It really is. Yeah. And when you get clear on that, then you can relax because you're like, you know what? My parents are not going to understand this. They grew up, you know, years ago before this was even real. I'm not going to waste my energy trying to convince them or get their approval. Uh, but I'm going to stay focused on my goals. And then when I have success, they'll, you know, they yeah, will probably yeah, res- come around. But that yeah, can't let be- the results speak for itself. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all for you. It's all for you. And then you just feel more. I look, look, I, my lifestyle, my whole life, you know, in my twenties, I was doing, you know, I was the hippie of the family. I mean, I'm living in Hawaii, sleeping in my car, doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And, you know, it takes something to be, to do something different than what your family wants. Uh, But it was always very healthy. You know, there were times in my life where I resented my family and I didn't, I wasn't happy. And then as I learned to accept my family and understand their point of view, and really appreciate them, actually, that they were so patient with me. Um, I was a lot happier. So I think it's really mature of you. I think it's really powerful to have that attitude towards your parents. Uh, if you, any of you guys who are struggling with that, yeah, don't fight with them. Um, and, and what I also tell people if you're dealing with, I'm going to talk about this more with the interview with, um, with my other students, that like if, they're, if, it's, if it's a financial thing where they're threatening to cut you off, um, you can also be compassionate about that. But understand you do have power. And I don't think that it's really not cool. It's they're, they're trying to exert power over you because you know, they've, you've been depending on them for your money for 20 years and you never learned how to make money. Most of you guys. Um, but you still can, you know, you can drop out, you can get a job, you can get your own apartment or get an apartment with roommates and, you know, create a foundation for yourself where you're free to make your own choices. I know that when I was in my twenties, I lived with my parents for a period of time. Um, like a lot of people do. And it was very difficult because I was constantly dealing with, you know, their expectations and judgments and my insecurities. And then I moved out to my own apartment and I just felt so great. <laughs> um, you know, and I didn't feel like I was dependent on them. So, but again, I'm, 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 I like your point of view, Diego, because I was I don't you don't want to be mad at your parents. You want to understand that they really believe that college is going to help you, even though mm-hmm. it's hurting you. Even if you're building debt, you know, I've had people trying to pressure their kids into taking out six figures in debt. Damn. That's a level of delusion that you can't reason with. You know, yeah. when, when someone wants their kid to take out one hundred thousand dollars to get an English degree, they've been indoctrinated and brainwashed and. I've talked with some of these parents. They just, you can't reason with them. So you got to just be compassionate about it. Maybe like you're talking to one of these flat earth people. (laughs) Like they're like convinced the earth is flat and you've got the satellite photos and the scientific data. You you can't convince them. The only way to convince them is is to shoot them up into space and let them see it for themselves. So that's basically what you're going to have to do. It's you're going to have to do it yourself, show them based on the results. Right. And hopefully it won't be, it's not as expensive or as difficult yeah. to get into space as it is to get into space, but you're right. But I mean, you know, but no, I think, you know, for some, some of those people with that level of belief, they might even, you know, they, they might get into space and think that, you know, that's a, that's fake. But, <laughs> but I think um, maybe the analogy isn't a hundred percent because I think with most parents, especially immigrant parents, when you show them the money, even if it's like you, when you started out, you weren't making 80,000. What were you making when you started? I was making 50. 50. Okay. But if 50 with benefits and 401k. So I know benefits is a big thing with, with uh, immigrant families too. Like you have to have health insurance and all these types of things. Yeah. Okay. And you know, the fact that you even get a job or the fact that you've even gotten a few clients like this, they'll start to take you more seriously. You know, that was my biggest challenge was in my 20s was that I was very smart, but I just I could not figure out money and I didn't have the Mm -hmm. patience to work a lot. You know, all I could do was wait tables and uh, do data entry because this is before the Internet, guys. When I grew up, this is the Stone Age. Um, And I, you know, once I got my financial foundation taken care of, it was a lot easier to have a really 
really positive relationship with my parents. Um, so I think, you know, but the fact that you're even exploring these things, you're actually thinking more intelligently than most of the people around you. Um, so I think those are some really great tips, Diego. Do you have anything else you want to sort of share with people at the, uh, before we wrap this up? Um, I would say that just try to take it. Don't, don't try to bite more than you can chew. Just take it one step at a time. Uh, honestly, this is whole point. Um, just, just follow the steps that I, I, I said, I think that would be the best route. If I was to do it all over again, that would be the route that I, I would go down. Um, but yeah, hundred percent, just continue to just go into, to online, see if there's any digital skills that you want. Cause I agree with Seth, like the digital world is where it's at. I mean, like what meta is now, you know? Um, so yeah, just continue to just go down that route and just always have a good opinion. You, you mentioned that sometimes having frustration with your parents and all these types of things sucks away energy. Very true. Um, all the times you're arguing with your parents and all those types of things, you're trying to force your ideas on them. It's just energy that would, would have been better used in taking a course online to learn a new skill or going out there to try to find some customers and doing that type of stuff. So be very mindful of how you spend your energy. That's actually a big thing that I've realized in 2021 and comes to productivity. Like I don't really focus on time management. I focus on energy management. Um, and a lot of it is like what content you consume online. And this is another topic we can go into like productivity and things like that. But um, basically when it comes to like how you manage relationships with your parents, try not to ex try not to use too much of your energy, basically hitting a wall, trying to explain to them something that they just don't understand. That's, that's great advice in general for anybody. One of the things that nobody ever talks about about everything. I mean, it's, it's worse now than ever in terms of like politics and things like that, but there's really no communication. If somebody isn't actually listening to you, if they are just trying to, you know, defend and then put forward their own belief, you have two people kind of talking at each other and mm -hmm. it's exhausting. So, you know, if you have parents who are cool and they're like open to it and they're like, Hey, we want to learn. Some, some parents are like that. Um, they're like, hey, we're open to your ideas. Tell us more about these skill sets and what your plan is. Absolutely share with them. But you got to kind of read the room, right? You know, a lot of people, I was like this too. I was just oblivious. Uh, these other students might have realized like you get oblivious because they're your parents and you go into child mode and you're, you're like six again and you're like trying to get them to, you know, take you to the, you know, get some ice cream or, you know, explain why you shouldn't have to go to bed early. And that's another reason you have to understand guys that, it's very difficult, I think, for any human being, because we all have parents, even your parents had parents, right? Your grandparents, um, they did raise you and they related to you when you were a baby, like you were like this big and you were like shitting yourself, right? And you were crying and you, they had to feed you. And in a lot of parents, they still see you like that in a way. It's like yeah. ingrained in their psyche. So they may just not even be able to take you seriously until you really... Be, you know, start conducting yourself like an adult. Yeah. And that's okay too. I think it's hard for a lot of parents to understand that their kids might have better understanding and knowledge of what the world happening in the world than they are. They grew up, like you said, they, they change your diapers all the way. So they have a mindset of, I know what's best for you, but they don't understand what's going on in this world as much as we do when we're right. so interconnected in the internet. That's really, I mean, that's the, the entire problem. The entire student loan crisis is because of that. You have people who think they know what's better for you who do not. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that is unfortunate, but that's why it's important for you guys. I want to empower you to trust your gut, trust your instincts. And the other, the last thing I'll say in terms of advice about dropping out or anyone looking to get into a, a career field is talk to people in the field. That's why these interviews uh, me, Diego, all my other students or anyone, you're always welcome to reach out to them on LinkedIn. If you want to get into coding, uh, find coders and talk to them. And I'll do it. I'm going to do a whole other video about networking at some point, about the right way to approach people. But the point is you want to get your attention into the workforce, into industries, into the, into the future, really. Because I mean, like I said, if you're in college, where are you going to be in five years? Well, hopefully you're not going to, you know, some people stay in college for six years, you know, hopefully it's not you, but you're, su you're supposed to go off from college into the quote unquote real world. You should put your attention there. And it's so much more intelligent than, uh, you know, getting bogged down in this term paper, that term paper. 
if that field of study isn't for you, which in most cases, you know, if you're watching this, it probably isn't. Um, and again, even, you know, it's so funny. There's so few majors now that are really quote unquote worth it. Um, you know, business major is not worth it. And I'm going to be talking to someone about that. You know, even, you know, engineers, I've had so many engineers on my channel who dropped out of engineering or who had problems with how it was taught or who wanted to give the truth about like the actual demand for engineers. Um, so there's very few majors. I mean, that you know, accounting, you know, I mean, if you want to be a CPA, you need to go to school, but you can become a bookkeeper without a degree. So, I mean, there's like, other than being a doctor or a lawyer, I'm, you know, I think you're out, you're, you're probably in the right, you know, uh, if you're thinking about dropping out and we could talk more about those fields later, but anyway, guys, you know, you know, I'm very passionate about this and, um, you know, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I want you to feel free to comment below with any questions or feedback you might have. And also, Diego, can people reach out to you with any questions on LinkedIn? Yeah, feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. Um, I'm usually there um, pretty daily. I post on that platform, too. Um, so, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to always reach out to me. I'll be happy to answer anything. I'm muted. Sweet. Uh that's great, man. So yeah, 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 guys. Again, I hope this I hope this has been helpful. I know that you guys don't have that many resources from adult, adults really giving you real advice. You know, everyone you try to turn to about, about college, it, your parents, your teachers, you know, your peers, everybody is telling you the same thing. And if you're thinking of dropping out, you may feel you're different. There's something wrong with you. I'm here to tell you, you there is nothing wrong with you. you. You are thinking very intelligently. And I hope that this advice has been helpful. So anyway, guys, until next time, be good, and we will see you in the next video. Okay, how was that? Perfect. Good.